Hi there, welcome to Nippy and Invest. I have received quite a few requests in regards to book recommendations. And I'll be honest with you, I have read a lot of books over the years. Some of the books I might have read about uh, 15 years ago and I've completely forgotten about, but I still own most of these books. And what I'm going to do in today's video is I go through every single book on investing that I currently own or have in my possession right now. There might be a few others around that I have probably packed up because I'm in the transition of moving. I might be moving in a couple of months, but uh, that transition can take a while. So what I'm going to do is go through all the books I have in hand, and there are quite a few. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to the Amazon uh, website just to see if these books can still be bought. Uh, and I think, and I would assume most of them can. Now, I'm going to set this up or not set it up. What I'm going to do is separate the books into two uh, sections or two parts. The first group of books will be on fundamental analysis or fundamentals. Uh, and that's the reason I've decided to go down that path first is because that's how I started investing. Uh, fundamentals, I knew about Warren Buffett, I read about Peter Lynch, that sort of thing. And then what I'll do is I'll transition to technical analysis. And I would say the vast majority of my books are on technical analysis because uh, the fundamental side, the value investing side, became a little bit, bit more natural to me. And technical analysis need a little bit more work. Now, what I have found over the years, and when I say over the years, uh, I'm talking about probably 35 so years is that, and this is definitely true when it comes to my professional life, that you can hear about a concept, read about a concept, talk about a concept, but sometimes it takes a long time for that concept to be understood. Uh, and there's a lot of things when it comes to meteorology that took me a while to completely understand. Sometimes I had to read about it, learn about it two or three times before it set in. And I think that could be true when it comes to some concepts in investing, uh, whether it be fundamental or technical analysis. So some of these books I have not read for over 10 years. And I'm thinking as I started getting these books out of the box that I should read some of these books again. Okay, so let's start off with one of the first books I actually did read uh, many, many years ago, One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. In fact, I would actually say Peter Lynch is a better investor than Warren Buffett. He just did, didn't have as much time. Uh, his fund, man, fund, which was, I forget the name of the fund. I think it was Magellan. Uh, I could be wrong with that. Magellan. Uh, that performed significantly better uh, over a 15-year period than uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So Peter Lynch, Magellan. But Peter Lynch, as the man manager of Magellan Fund at Vi Fidelity Investments between 1977 and 1990, so only about 14 years, um, he's 80 years old now, he averaged a 29.2% annual return, 29.2% over that amount of years is a pretty good return consistently more than doubled the S&P 500 stock market index and making it the best performing mutual fund in the world. Yes, I believe this is, uh, he's also a proponent of value investing. That's probably why I was drawn to his book initially. I love value investing. I still like value investing, by the way. Um, he also, yeah, not only one up on Wall Street, I'm pretty sure he's released a few other books as well. Uh, another interesting thing, he's coined a number of well-known mantras of modern inv individual investing, such as invest in what you know, which I can understand, but I might discuss this more um, through one of the books I have also read. And Ten Bagger, yes, Peter Lynch came up with the name or the term Ten Bagger. Uh, Lynch has been described as a legend by the financial media for his performance record. So let's go back to, let's go back to da -da, Amazon. So One Up on Wall Street, and there's no doubt you could buy this book no matter what uh, site you go through. Uh, yeah, so in fact, I just Googled this, not Googled, Amazoned it, 
and hear, I mean, different languages. Uh, so you could buy a $206 version of it or audio, 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 audible audio book for zero, free with audible trial. Uh, $22.91 paperback, Kindle $12.61 in a different language, Marathi. So uh, this would be one of my top recommendations. Now, some of the things, what I might do is just, I won't go through what he talks about, but I'll just go through the contents. So preparing to invest, is this a gambling or what? Which is an interesting topic, which could be a good video, by the way. Uh, picking Because there's a lot of people out there who believe investing is just gambling. Uh, and I know this, personal experience. Uh, picking win win winners, uh, stalking in the 10-bagger. Uh, the perfect stock, what a deal. Stocks are void. Earnings, earnings, earnings. Uh, the final checklist, designing a portfolio. The 12 silliest and most dangerous things people say about stock prices. I can't remember that at all. Let's go to page 258 just to see what he talks about here. Uh, if it's gone down this much already, it can't go much lower. Yet yeah, that is really dangerous. Uh, that's why technical analysis, um, I think, is a really good way to invest for some people. You can always tell when a stock hits bottom. No. Nope. If it's gone this high already, how can it possibly go higher? It can go infinitely higher. Uh, it's only a $3 share. What can I lose? Well, everything. Uh, what else? Eventually, they always come back. Nope. It's always darkest before the dawn. Well, not if the sun disappears. When it rebounds to $10, I'll sell. Well, yeah, that's That actually is one of the fundamentals of technical analysis. People see the share price when they buy into a stock. They see the share price drop, and then they say, well, when it rebounds to the price I bought, I'll sell. Uh, anyway, what me worry? Conservative stocks don't fluctuate much. Okay. It's taken too long for anything to ever happen. Okay, so definitely a recommendation, one up on Wall Street. Okay, I should have to push these or move these books over a little bit more, closer to what I'm doing, because, yes, and I probably should mention the second book, Intelligent Investor. Intelligent Investor. Now, this is, I, I probably would recommend this book. The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham. Uh, there it is, Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham. Um, probably written, I'd say, 1930s. In fact, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd say, oh, 1949. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit later than I thought. I did find this a big slog to get through. I am going to admit that I did find it a big slog. I read this many, many years ago, and I'm going to read it again because I'm going to see if it's still relevant to the way I invest um, because I have heard that Warren Buffett say, uh, not Warren Buffett, uh, Benjamin Graham say that the way he invested, this is in the 1970s, I believe he died in 1976. I could be wrong about that. 1976 sounds about right. Uh and I, I remember him saying, well, I don't remember him saying this, but I have heard that he says the way he used to invest would not work in the modern world. Uh, and that was 1976. Yeah, he died in 1976. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely right. So uh, I did find it sort to get through. Uh, will I read it again? Yes. Uh, maybe some of the things that I found more difficult the first time, the second time through, because I'm much more of an experienced investor now. And maybe the second time through, uh, some of the stuff, that I did read and maybe find hard to um, to well find found hard to conceive not con no, the con no, whatever you know what I mean some of the things that I found hard to grasp that's the word grasp maybe a second time through it won't be as hard so intelligent investor Benjamin Graham unfortunately this copy is um, stained by it looks like water not sure how. Anyway, so Intelligent Investor would be definitely another recommendation, but be aware that it can be a bit of a slog to get through. Okay. Uh, now, talking about Benjamin Graham, this is a book I have not read, uh, but all the way through, by the way, uh, because uh, it's um, quite lengthy and they do talk about a lot of stuff that I don't care about, like bonds and stuff. But Security Analysis by Benjamin Graham and David Dodge. Uh, I'm pretty sure this 
maybe it's from the 1930s originally. Yeah, first published in 1934. Security analysis. Uh, this is the sixth edition, McGraw and Hill. Uh, many, many, very long, 700 pages long. So, for instance, I'll just go through the contents of this book so you can just see what I'm talking about. Uh, and when I say there's some stuff in this that I don't really care about. So they do talk about fixed value investments, unshackling bonds, uh, senior securities and speculative features, um, uh, seeing, well, I don't know what senior securities are, convertible issues, uh, talking about hedging, the theory of common stock investment, uh, analysis of the income accounts, uh, balance sheet analysis. That's some things I would be interested in running. Of course, I don't have a cash flow, uh, cash flow statement uh, um, uh, part because cash flow statements weren't around back then, um, I believe. In fact, in fact, that's interesting. When did cash flow statements have to be included? Cash flow statements. Uh, history. Sorry, going a bit of a tangent here. Uh, there we go. 1973. In the United States in 1973, the Financial Accounting Standards Board defined rules that made it mandatory under generally uh, accounting, accepted accounting principle to report sources and users' funds for the definite. Okay, maybe that's not it. But I'm pretty sure that uh, most um, financial statements uh, 50 years ago or so uh, did not include cash flow statements. Uh, maybe 1992, 1994. Yeah, here it is, 1994. Yeah, 1994, mandating that firms provide cash flow statements. There you go, 1994. Before that, no cash flow statements. Anyway, so um, security analysis, a book I haven't really gone through uh, just slightly, a little bit, but um, that could be something for you. Here's an interesting one. A random walk down Wall Street. A random, random walk down Wall Street. Now, this is another one that I haven't read for a long time. This is by Burton G. Malkiel. Uh Definitely a lot of options here. This is actually the one I do have. Random walk down Wall Street. So what is a random walk down Wall Street? I'm pretty sure he has a definition here, and I'm not sure if I completely agree with this thinking anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to have a look. Random walk down. What is a random walk? Page 26. So that's the definition. A random walk is one in which future steps or directions cannot be predicted on the basis of past history. When the term is applied to the stock market, it means that short Short run changes in stock prices are unpredictable. Investment advisory services, earning forecasts, and complica complicated chart patterns are useless. Say that again. Investment advisory services, earnings forecasts, and complicated chart patterns are useless. Uh, on Wall Street, the term random walk is an obscenity. It is an epithet, epithet coined by the academic world and hurled insultingly at the professional to soothsayers. Okay, so some of the things he talked about in here, he's saying that it's, uh, I think if I remember correctly, uh, everything's just random. Yeah, you can't predict anything, particularly in the short term. But he does talk about technical analysis in here. So how the plat pros play the biggest game in town, technical and fundamental analysis, what the charts can tell you, the rationale for charting method, why might charting fail to work from chartist to technician, technical analysis and the random walk theory. Um, I'm wondering if he's, um, I can't remember, if he was very anti-technical uh, analysis, and maybe he's having a go at that. But uh, I'm going to have a read of this again just to see if I can remember what he was actually talking about with random walk down Wall Street, uh, particularly because my uh, investing philosophies had completely changed since last time I read this book. Okay, a few other technical analysis, not technical, fundamental analysis books. I think this one is 101 stock, 101 ways to stock market winners. I can't remember reading this at all. Maybe I was not that impressed. Ways to pick stock market winners. Yep, this is it. From Glenn Chambers, uh, 2013. They just go through all these ways. It's a very simple book. It would have been very easy to read. For instance, way 50 is negative equity 
That's a short signal. Difficulty four, uh, if we go to, say, 30, call up the FD and say hello. Not sure what that is. Uh, what else? Boxing Clever. It's longer. No, I have no idea that is. Um, flatlining companies dead or in a coma. Signal long. Investing in the bear. Trading in the bull. Selling the rallies. Uh, what else? From the mouths of babes and sucklings. Not for sale. A pinch of salt required. Golden rule for that apparently that was. The big downer. 50% down from the high or more. That's a long signal. Uh, let's not get physical. Gold ETF. Buy a gold producer. Uh, don't buy the gold mine, buy the spade maker. Uh, so hopefully that makes a bit sense what he's talking about here. Say so 101 ways to pick stock market winners, if that's your sort of thing. Uh, and I don't remember reading that at all. Uh, also read how to pick stocks like Warren Buffett. How to pick stocks like Warren Buffett. Uh, this is by Timothy Vick. Yep, this one here, right there, this one here. Uh, yeah, not sure if this is, are you able to buy this still? Let's have a look. Uh, Audible audiobook, uh, maybe it looks like a different edition here. Yeah, same person looks like, a review analysis of Vic's book, by the way. So it looks like there's a review analysis of Vic's book. You can buy Vic's book and get a review of his book or analysis of his book. Uh, anyway, so... If you want to learn more about Warren Buffett and how he picks uh, stocks, uh, this could be a good book for you. Okay. Common stocks and uncommon profits. Common stocks and, whoops. And uncommon profits by Philip. A Fisher definitely can buy this. I don't remember this book at all. So let's have a look. I sort of would have read this, yeah, probably well over 10 years ago. Uh, and I will read this again. So, okay, first thing he actually says in the contents is scuttlebutt, which I believe comes from Peter Lynch. I could be wrong with that, but I always thought scuttlebutt as a Peter Lynch um, saying etymology in investing. Well, it's not yeah, investing. Oh, maybe it's a little bit, according to this, it's a little bit earlier than that. Oh, no, that's different. Anyway, I could be completely wrong. Oh, look, power of Phil Fisher's scuttlebuff method. There you go. And that's um the guy who wrote this book. Guru Focus, The Power of Phil Fisher's Scuttlebutt Method. So that's the first part of his contents here, what Scuttlebutt can do, what to buy, the 15 points to look for in a common stock, uh, applying this to your own needs, when to sell and when not to, the hullaboo about dividends, five don'ts for investors, five more don'ts for investors. So let's have a look at um, page 47, what to buy, the 15 points to look for in a con common stock. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting in this. Uh, oh, it goes on. Oh, it's just writing. Point one, does the management have determination to continue to develop products or processes that will still further increase total sales potentials when the growth potentials of currently attractive producer lines have been, oh, have I just gone to sleep, have largely been exploited? That point needs to be a little bit shorter. Uh, point one, that was point two. Point one, does a company have products or services with sufficient market potential to make possible a sizable increase in sales for at least several years. So this is definitely a fundamental book. Uh, how, point three, how effective are the Commons research and development efforts in relation to its size? And a lot of this, I think, would be very hard to find. Does a company have an above average sales organization? I don't really care about that sort of thing. Uh, point seven, does a company have outstanding labor and personal relations? Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about when it comes to common stocks and uncommon Profit by Philip A. Fisher. I will read this again. Uh, there's, a, there's actually a comment from Warren Buffett. I'm an eager reader of whatever Phil has to say, and I recommend him to you. Uh, I can't recommend this to you because I can't remember reading this at all. Uh, oh, who's heard of Matthew Kidman? Yes, he's an Australian. He's here, there, everywhere, it seems like. Bulls, bears, and uh, 
Croupia. So this is from Australian. Here it is, yeah. Here it is. So this is the book I do have, Bulls, Bears, and a Croupia. There's something interesting in this. I do remember this. Uh, if we go to the content section, maybe I can see where exactly where it is. So his uh, contents, part one is the wonderful stock market. Uh, part two is building the foundations. Who are you? The road to discovery, creating your own Wall Street, the nine rules of success. Uh, part three is ready, set, go. Finding stocks that go up. Primary school numbers, margins, ratios, and all that jazz. All companies are different. The perfect company, which probably does not exist. Uh, trophy trophy cabinet to rubbish bin. Don't find momentum. Traps, the mystery of management. Exploding myths. Skin in the game. Look for the catalyst, not the company. Old and past it. Okay, look for the catalyst and not the company. Page 233. Let's have a look at that. That's interesting. I wonder if he's saying, is that a myth or is the opposite? So look for the catalyst and not the company because I believe in the catalyst. I believe catalyst is really important. Uh, anyway, let's see what he says. Professional investors are often quoted as saying, I won't buy shares in a company unless I understand what it does. Uh, Peter Lynch, uh, Scuttlebutt, that sort of thing. I think that's what Scuttlebutt is. Uh, the greatest living investor, Warren Buffett, preaches this view and it makes a great deal of sense. Why would you put your money, uh, your own money and possibly other people's money into something you don't fully understand? I think it's going to be however here. In reality, though, it is highly unusual for any investor to fully comprehend what a business does and what drives its success. And I absolutely agree with Matthew Kidman here. If I actually was a proponent and a follower of only buying companies that I understand completely, I would never buy a company at all because there's always going to be something I don't understand about a company unless I'm running that company. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of only buying companies you understand. And I'm glad that Matthew Kidman has is talking about that in this. So I should read this again. If I like what he says there, maybe I'll like more about uh, this book. Again, Bulls, Bears, and a Croupia. Who stopped gambling and made millions? The insider's profit or insider's guide to profiting from the Australian stock market. Okay, that's all. That's all the fundamental books I have read. Yes. And I have a pile of technical analysis books, an absolute pile. Can you believe it? Now, I can't remember. Actually, no, I do remember the first one I read. And the first technical analysis books I read were from Louise Bedford, which who is an Australian. So let's, I'm trying to find a book here because there's so many. In fact, Daryl Guppy, I read his book second. Here is a few from, there is a lot here. Oh, yeah. So Louise Bedford, there is. she also has a, a podcast, I think also, uh, did I spell that right? I can't spell Louise. Okay, and funny enough, uh, the first three books here, Charting Secrets, Charting Secrets, Trading Secrets, there we go, and The Secrets of Candlesticks, the first three here. Uh, her books. Uh, I don't even remember which exactly which one I first read. But these what got me into technical analysis. Uh, I can't remember exactly what drew me to these books. Uh, the, and one of my, I suppose, one of my qualities is just curiosity. And I was curious about charts and charting, uh, even though, or even when I started investing, that sort of thing. And something just drew me into her books. Not sure. And the whole reason why I use candlesticks is because of Lee Wee's Bedford. So the secret of candlestick charting, uh, it's not that very long. Uh, you learn a lot of these little patterns. For instance, I'm just going to open up randomly the morning star. Um, so you can learn about that sort of pattern or the Hamat, the Harami cross, which I don't know about. Um, bullish engulfing pattern. Uh, yeah, uh, where to draw your lines. So talking about support and resistance, uh, trend lines, where to draw your lines, uh, tweezer tops, uh, tweezer bottoms, which I know nothing about, dominant white candles. So I, um, on its, on occasion, I do talk about that. Dominant, in, in fact, for my charts, it's green candles, but that's where you get a really long green body. Um, that's really good buying pressure. Uh, dominant black candle which is the complete opposite, which is a red candle with what I look. That's very bearish. Uh, anyway, so 
so some of this has definitely seeped into my brain. Um, so apparently she looks like she uses a 30-week moving average. Putting it all together, how I use a relative strength comparison. Yeah, so recommend that one if you're starting out. Uh, trading secrets, uh, killing strategies to beat the markets and finally achieve the success you deserve. What does she talk about here? I can't remember at all. So let's have a look. The contents, business secrets, it takes all sites. It's all about sex. Ooh, trading tools, uh, trade management secrets, uh, recession smashing strategies. Okay, so I can't remember reading this at all. But anyway, and the other one was charting secrets, trade like a machine and finally beat the markets using these bulletproof strategies. So some of the stuff within this book. Moving averages rock. That is a chapter. Uh, so maybe one of the reasons why I really like moving averages is because of Louise Bedford. I didn't really know that. Uh, volume counts. A massive proponent of volume. So chapter three is volume counts. Chapter four is moving averages. Uh, I should read this again. Uh, my momentous momentum mistake is chapter five. Magic macro continuation patterns. Candlesticks under cut. Putting it all together. Um, yeah, I should read this again. Maybe I took a lot from this particular book because some of that volume and moving averages is stuff I use today. Okay, what should I? Yeah, Daryl Guppy. Yeah. So one of the next book I read was Daryl Guppy. Guppy Trading. Guppy Trading. And one of the reasons why I went from using like one or two moving averages to using many moving averages is because of Guppy Trading. Daryl Guppy, this book right here. Guppy Trading, Essential Methods for Modern Trading. Uh, this is definitely a book I will read through again. Now, he uses more moving averages than I use. He uses probably twice as many moving averages as I use. Um, in fact, I'll just show you one of his Daryl Guppy chart. The image. Oh, I can't even spell Daryl dryly. Here we go. Guppy multiple moving average, uh, whatever it's called. Guppy multiple moving average. And where was that? Here it is. Yeah. So he uses at least about 12. So I will use about four. So three times as many moving averages that I use. So that's. Guppy trading, I will go through this again. In fact, I've gone through this twice and I'll probably go through it again sooner rather than later. What else? I'll leave some of the books I'm reading or just bought recently to last. A uh, couple of books I bought for free, well, wouldn't buy for free, that I just received for free. Uh, Dale Gillum, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%. I think I just had to sign up for something to get that particular book. Uh, he ha does have uh, um, a YouTube and he also has a, a what do you call it, um, a learnings thing, Wealth Within, that's it, Professional Trader Chief Analysis. So you can actually learn a lot from Wealth Within, uh, YouTube Wealth Within channel as well. Um, yeah, so that's okay. That was a quick read. Another one I got for free was uh, Price Action. Trading Secrets from Rainer Teo. Now, he also is on YouTube and he is followed by many people. Rainer, he has heaps of uh, 2 million subscribers. And this was another case. He had 2 million subscribers. Some of the videos he's released. Let's have a look at the most popular ones. Uh, Candlestick Pattern Trading, Ultimate Beginner's Guide, The Ultimate Stock Trading Course for Beginners, Support and Resistance Strategy, Moving Average Secrets. There you go. So two of his most popular videos are about support resistance, which I, um, which I, yeah, I'm a big uh, supporter of, and moving average secrets, uh, technical analysis secrets. Uh, so some of these videos have over 7 million views. Maybe this is what I should do for a new channel, this sort of thing. Anyway, so he uh, sent me a book for free. I don't know why. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns by Balkowski.
and so, see, if I can, see if I can spell Cyclopedia of Chart Patterns. That's it by Potolsky. This is it. Uh, oh, I've got two of these books. Um, yeah, here we go. So I'll show you that one next. So uh, this is just a Cyclopedia of Chart Patterns, one of these, yeah. Uh, I've got a hardback, hardcover. Uh, according to this, it's $200. Uh, I can't remember if I paid that much. So it just goes through all the chart patterns. The other thing I liked about this particular book, it goes through success and failure rates for these chart patterns. Let's find one. Let's find one. Double bottoms. I do like double bottoms. So double bottoms, Adam and Eve, I'm not sure what the difference is. And they talk about, uh, he talks about success rates in bull markets and bear markets. So in the bear market, this is a three out of nine. Break even failure rate, 4%. Average rise, 33%. Change after trend ends, down 35%. Volume trend, 34%. Um, so he does go through how successful they are, identification guidelines. Uh, what else? Yeah. So if you want to learn more about uh, chart patterns, this is definitely the book for you. Uh, average formation length, height and width combination, width, height, yaps, throwbacks. Oh, it's got everything in here. Trading tactics can tell you how to trade these double bottoms, that sort of thing. Uh, for best performance, uh, oh, look, he's got a sample trade here, best performance, and he's got all these uh, different tables and graphs. So that's a pretty good and long book. Uh, so we're talking about, yeah, 1,000 pages long. Yes, 1,000 pages long just for you. And I didn't know I had two of his books. Another one is Getting Started in Chart Patterns. This one here. I just saw the, uh, yeah, so Getting Started in Chart Patterns. So this could be maybe a step to the encyclopedia. Uh, this one's good, yeah. So it's fairly similar than that one. And it goes through, here it is, the diamond tops and bottoms, flags and pennants, identification. Yeah, let's talk about flags and pennants. I always get these confused between a flag and a pennant. Identification. So how to identify a flag or a pennant and what's the difference between the two, which sometimes I do mess up. Uh, trading and trading tips for flags and pennants. Uh, and he's got quite a few graphs there. Measuring success. Case study. Yeah, a brilliant book. Uh, fairly old, I think. Trying to uh, published in 2014. Anyway, so that's that one. Uh, what about this one? How to make money in stocks getting started. I don't remember reading this one at all. How to make money in stocks getting started. Oh, it's this one here. Oh, it's one of these. Yeah, here it is. This one here. Uh, forward by William J. O'Neill, which I actually do have one of his books as well. How to Make Money in Stocks Getting Started, a guide to putting can slim concepts in action. And the can slim concepts come from, I believe I read that in another book, if I can find it here somewhere. Uh, here it is. In fact, this particular book is How to Make Money in stocks. So very similar to this one, but by a different person. And it's, I'll just talk about the can slim. So I'll actually show you this one, how to make money in stocks. Just, uh, it's, yeah, it's this one here. And he does talk about the can slim uh, concept. Uh, what page is that in? So this is the can slim. In fact, each letter in the can slim has its own chapter. Chapter three, C, current big or accelerating quarterly earnings and sales per share. I talk about that all the time. I like to see companies increasing their revenue over time or the earnings per share over time, uh, according to this C here. So current big or accelerating quarterly. I don't really talk about accelerating um, earnings per share, but I do like increasing earnings per share. Uh, so that's the C, A. Annual earnings increases look for big growth. Yes, I always look for that. Newer company, or N is newer companies, new products, new management, new highs of properly, properly formed basis. So we see the share price going sideways and the share price pops up to all-time highs. 
S, supply and demand. Big volume demand at key points. Volume. Volume matters. So that's the S. L, leader or laggard, which is your stock? Yeah, I sort of can understand that. Uh, institutional sponsorship. So uh, institutions getting excited about a company. That can drive volume and that will drive the share price higher. And M is market direction. How can you determine it? So what he's talking about here is if the market or the overall market is in the bull market, you should be more excited uh, with that. So that's what this book is, just going through his can slim. And it seems like for some reason I bought a compliment to that. Maybe I bought both at the same time. I can't remember. Many, many years ago. Anyway, uh, what else? Here's one. The Business of Share Trading by Leon Wilson. The Business of Share Trading. By Leon Wilson, this one exactly here, uh, 2012. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he's definitely technical analysis. In fact, uh, he probably says that somewhere here. So he has the best approach. Uh, does he actually mention what the best approach is here? Not sure. Oh, he comes from Tasmania. I didn't realize that. Um, okay, so contents, basic principles and techniques, uh, the best trading plan, page 63, indicators and opportunities, bring it all together. So let's go to 63, page 63. He talks about technical analysis on page 14. 63, he goes through all the questions you have to ask yourself. Uh, sh what should I trade? Blue chip, mid cap, speculative, uh, derivatives, talking about shares. Mid he talks about blue kit, blue chips, mid caps, and the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the best approach, B E S T. The E is actually lowercase. The B S T or, or uppercase. Uh, he's actually suggested that share market newcomers trade only blue chips at first. Mid cap shares with good liquidity could be considered. Should all uh, all your other selection criteria be met? I've actually heard that a lot. That uh, beginners should learn or should stick with. Um, uh, blue chips, I don't do that. Uh, here it is, the best trading plan. He just goes through his training plan here. So what am I, what am I achieving to, aiming to achieve? This is what you should ask yourself. What are my strengths and how, should, how am I optimizing them? What are my weaknesses and how will I come them? What is my business structure? How much time will I devoted daily to trading? What are the distractions in my daily return? How will I overcome? Uh, so a lot of questions here. Uh, so this seems like it's more like day trading, if anything. Um, everyone has a choice between four basic trading approaches. Intraday, short term, I've referred to as momentum or string trading, position and buy and hope. So obviously he believes that fundamental analysis and value investors are just buying and hoping. And there is an element of truth in that. In my opinion, the long-term investors Yep, better known as the hold and hope or purchase and pray brigade are the most fearless of all the stock market participants. They have no technical entry criteria to aid the selection of suitable stocks and have and having purchased stock, there is no measurement process in place to admit the regular evaluation of its performance and its worthiness for inclusion in their portfolio. So obviously he's very anti-technical analysis and very anti-value investors. And I can't disagree with that. Uh, yeah, so that's an interesting book. But again, I haven't read that for probably 10 years. Uh, what else? Oh, I completely forgot this one. This is um, Financial Statement Analysis, a Practitioner's Guide. I'm not a practitioner, and I can't remember going through that at all. So I'll move on. Okay, so now we get into some books that... Oh, here's one. Fundamental analysis and position training. This is another one from uh, Thomas N. Barkowski. Uh, so we can move on. This is just one of his books. So obviously I really like this guy. Uh, interesting. I'll just open up to a random page. Uh, buy small caps with low PE. High PE time to sell. This doesn't seem like his sort of book. Anyway, yeah, I can't remember reading that at all. Okay, now we're getting to the nitty-gritty. Now I'm going to show you a book I, so Intelligent Investor, I found a real slog to get through. 
And that is sort of like the Bible for fundamental analysis. The Bible for technical analysis is this one of stock trends, this one from by Edwards McGee. Uh, in fact, this is the edition I do have. Uh, this book was first written in night or released in 1948. I believe da -da, I could be mistaken there by a few years. I have found this to be a real hard slog to get through. It is long. We're talking about 600 pages. Uh, and this is, yeah, this is, I'm seeing if it does have the first publisher in the, usually they do have when it was first published, but I don't see it here. This particular edition, uh, was released in 2009, no, 2021. So I'm just going to go through some, there's a lot of chapters here, by the way. So for instance, uh, you'll see a lot of the really good technical analysis books. We'll start off with Dow Theory. So for instance, here, part one, technical theory, the technical approach to trading investing, chapter one. Chapter two is charts. Chapter three, Dow Theory. Uh, chapter four, Dow Theory's defects. Uh, chapter five, replacing Dow theory with John McGee's basing points procedure. Uh, chapter six, important reversal patterns. So they go through some patterns. Um, chapter 12 is talking about gaps. Chapter 13, support and resistance. Uh, chapter 14, trend lines and channels. Chapter 15, major trend lines. Chapter 16, technical analysis of commodity charts. So there's some things in here that I don't really care about. Uh, part two is trading tactics. The tactical problem, the kind of stocks we want, the speculator's viewpoint, selection of stocks to chart. Uh, don't forget, back when they wrote this book, uh, there was no computers. So they had to do all the charting themselves. Anyway, so this is, in essence, the Bible for technical analysis. So technical analysis of stock trends by Edwards and McGee, of course, no longer alive. Uh, another really good book I liked is... Stan Weinstein, and I think I've read this probably at least twice. This is it. So this is another older book, so first published in 1992. In fact, this is the edition I have. Uh, so Stan Weinstein, Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Market. Probably my only problem with this book is some of the charts are fairly small and you have to squint to look at them. That's my only concern, but I'll just go through some of the chapters here. Uh, chapter three is the ideal time to buy. Uh, refining the buying process is chapter four. Chapter five is uncovering exceptional winners. Chapter six, when to sell. Chapter seven, talking about selling short, which I don't really haven't really read. Uh, but he also talks about, um, for instance, in the ideal time to buy, uh, he does actually talk about, if I can find it here, probably won't be able to find it. Yeah, the four-year presidential cycle. Yep, he talks about that. Uh, buying and selling patterns to be aware of. The four-year presidential cycle, uh, which is one of the things I remember him talking about. I was like, interested in that. Um, market performance each day of the week. I'm not sure how much of this is relevant now, but... Uh, the days of the week have different performances historically over time. Uh, anyway, uh, so here is, a, I, I'll finish this book off with this. What to buy? My forest to the trees approach. First question, what's the trend of the market? If it's negative, you want to do very little, if any, buying, which makes sense. Uh, but maybe there are some companies that uh, have a really good chart. So that's why he says very little, if any, buying. Uh, your probabilities of success are quite low when the market trend is going against you. Uh, question two, or point two, which few groups look the very best technically? The importance of this question can't be overemphasized since my studies have consistently shown that two equally bullish charts will perform far differently if one is from a bullish sector while the other uh, breakout is in a bearish group. So that's something I don't really pay that much attention to, if I'm honest. The favorable chart in the bullish group will often quickly advance 50 to 75%, while the equally bullish chart in the bearish group may struggle to a 5 to 10% gain. Again, it's something I haven't really thought about. And once you determine, point three, the market trend is bullish and group A acts the very best technically, the final step in the process is to zero in on the one or two best individual chart patterns in that sector. So that's his forest to the trees approach. 
So that's actually a nice little book for those who are interested. Uh, okay, I'm going to go through, I've only got a few left here. And four of the ones left uh, I haven't completely read. Now, here's one from Anna Cooling. And I've mentioned many times before how I'm a fan of volume. Uh, is there two L's in her? There is two L's in her. There you go. And this is, I saw this book and went, oh, this could be for me, a complete guide to volume price analysis. Uh, this is from 2013. Seems like all, a lot of the books I did buy were from that area, like 2012, 2013. This is. This is one I'm going to read again. Uh, in fact, I've, I've read here. I've written down, written down a book to read. Uh, yeah. And this is a quote from Edwin Lefer, 1923. There is nothing new in Wall Street. It can't be because speculation is old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before and will happen again. This is, in essence, sums up volume and volume price analysis. If you're expecting something, expecting some new and exciting approach to trading, you will be disappointed. Now, at this point, you may be asking yourself three questions. Is volume still relevant today? Yep. Is it relevant in, to the market I trade? Yep. Can it apply to all trading investing strategies? Yep. I'll probably say yes to all that. Uh, so some of the things she talks about in this particular book. Uh, so why volume? The right price, volume price analysis, first principles, uh, building the picture. The next level, support and resistance explained. Dynamic trends and trend lines, volume at price, volume price analysis examples. Uh, it's not a very long book, and it's a very big book, by the way, in terms of it's like wide. But yeah, a complete guide to volume price analysis. Yes. Okay, now onto some of the books I have not finished reading, and I am excited about these ones. The first one is. The Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets. Technical Analysis of Financial Markets by Murphy. Uh, which one is it? Uh, oh, here, here, here. Yeah, this one. Yeah, I've got the, unfortunately, I have the uh, cover off. This is a hardback. Uh, I have started to read these books. I've got four of them, and I really like them. Uh, I haven't haven't got through much of this book, but um, so for instance, I'll just go through some of the contents in this one. So I've already mentioned that, in my opinion, a lot of the technical analysis books, uh, a lot of them should start with Dow theory. They should start at the beginning, and so uh, for this to this particular book, chapter two is on Dow theory. Chapter three, chart construction, arithmetic versus logarithmic, candlesticks, he talks about construction of the daily bar chart, uh, weekly and monthly bar charts, basic concepts of trend. Uh, trend has three directions, trend has three classifications, support and resistance, trend lines, um, channel line, major reversal patterns, continuation patterns. So he talks about uh, the importance of volume. Page 107, there you go. Uh, continuation patterns, symmetrical triangles, ascending triangles, volume and open interest. That is one chapter in itself. Looking forward to reading that one. Long-term charts. Yes, chapter eight. Chapter nine is on moving averages. Uh, moving average envelopes, Bollinger Bands, moving averages tied to cycles, Fibonacci numbers used as moving averages. Uh, and then he talks about oscillators and contrary opinion, point and figure charting, Japanese candlesticks. I'm pretty sure candlesticks came from Japan. Elliott wave theory. So that is one thing I want to learn more about is Elliott wave theory. So maybe this can be my start. Time cycles, computers and trading systems, money management and trading tactics. Oh, it keeps on going on. Stock market indicators. Oh, there's a lot here. 500 pages long. Okay, so that's financial markets or financial analysis of the financial markets, or no, technical analysis of the financial markets by Murphy. Uh, one I've started reading but haven't quite finished well. No, we need finishing yet. Another book I'm reading is Technical Analysis Explained by Pringer. So you might say, why am I reading 
a book called Technical Analysis Explained. Again, this is just me just trying to build on my knowledge. And the more I build on my knowledge, a lot of the foundations of my knowledge will be really solid. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now, really build up my foundation. So Technical Analysis Explained, I do have the art copy and I've taken off the cover. Uh, again, this is from 2013. Um, I am halfway through this book. Yes, halfway through this book. And this is another, uh, the half the half I've read, I really like this book. So let's again, just go to the contents and you can see what this person is talking about. Uh, so, oh, there's only, the contents is very short. Um, so third chapter is Dow Theory again. Uh, then he talks about trend lines, basic characteristics of volume. That's its own volume, its own chapter, which is about 20 pages long. Classic price patterns, smaller price patterns and gaps, one and two bar price patterns, moving averages, envelopes and bulger bands. Uh, he has three chapters on momentum, uh, including principles and indicators, candlestick charting, point of figure charting, concept of relative strength, um, putting the indicators together. And then part two, that's part one. Part two is market structure. And part three is other aspects of market analysis. Uh, so I'm halfway through this book. And when I say halfway through, I'm on page 383 of about 700 pages, uh, almost 800 pages. Okay. Now, so there are two books I have not started yet. Two books I have not started. Well, that's a lie. Uh, I'm through six pages of one book. So Technical Analysis Using Multiple Time Frames by Ryan, Brian Shannon. So let's just put up oh, Amazon Brian Shannon. See if, yep, they're both popping up straight away. So Anchored VWAP, Maximum Drain Canes with Anchored VWAP. This is a new concept I'm trying to learn about. And Technical Analysis Using Multiple time frames so multiple time frames uh i'm assuming he means like daily weekly and monthly or maybe hourly uh daily and monthly and that's what i assume when i bought this book but i could be wrong because i haven't started reading this one yet so uh, i'm just trying to oh he talks about volume chapter nine is volume so even this guy is talking about volume price and volume the relationship Chapter 10 is moving averages. So he's got short-term moving average, intermediate-term moving average, and a long-term moving average. So that's sort of what I use in a way. Anyway, so I look forward to reading that eventually when I have a little bit more time. Okay, so that's all the books I have on hand right now. Uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, just leave those in the comment section. Maybe you have some of your own recommendations you'd like to give me because there are a lot of books out there in fact, if you just have investing, or let's have let's put in technical analysis. Uh, the first one is, of course, technical analysis of stock trends by Edwards and McGee, a beginner's guide to technical analysis, uh, trading and technical analysis by Mal Verne. Uh, so there's quite a few books I have not heard of or even read. There's even technical analysis for dummies, charting and technical analysis by Fred McCallan. Oh, there's a lot here. Getting Started in Technical Analysis by Shager, Adam Grimes, The Art and Science of Technical Analysis. There's so much chart logic. I'm going to have a closer look to see if there's any other books I might like having a read. Okay, so that's all I've got for this particular uh, video on uh, some of the books I'm reading, maybe some recommendations for you. Uh, and instead of doing an answer and reply video, this is in replace of that. So um, have a good day. Have a good weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.